Hi, welcome to Angel Snook. If you like our videos, please like, comment, and especially subscribe so you know when the next one comes out. And if you're commenting, please let us know what you like, what you're interested in, what's helping you, and what you might like to see in the future. Thanks for stopping by. This is a solid maple tray. It's in really nice shape overall, but it does not fit the colors of our home. And it's not really a popular color right now anywhere if you were going to resell this. So I'm gonna start working on this by painting the inside with a bright white, because if I decide to keep it in our home, that's what would go with our kitchen. And then I'm going to tone down the center of this. I'm going to add a stencil into it. And the outside, I'm going to put into more of a Pottery Barn finish and probably this upper edge as well. This has already been wiped down with deglosser wipes. So it's ready for me to start working on the first steps of it. And the first thing I'm gonna do is paint the inside of it. The first coat of paint is going to be the pure white cashmere on the inside of this. Because um, I've still not decided, I think this is a piece I'm going to keep and use as a tray for uh, a variety of things, especially like warm breads when they're brought out. So I'm going to start with that because cashmere is the white that is in my kitchen. A soft white would also have been very pretty on this. I'm using a fourth of a true applicator because I've got some really tiny places to get in here and I want to try to avoid getting on this top lip and I've got a very tight space here where the um, there's not much space in here and I'm not I don't want necessarily to have white on this edge where the hand grips are to lift this I'm pretty sure I want that to be stained and I can always change it down the road if I change my mind. But because this is a small space, I'm trying to avoid areas on. Using a quarter of a true applicator is gonna work well for me, and it's also why I use it when I am uh, stenciling. I do it that way. It's a little bit slower than if I were using the big full true applicator, but it will work for my purposes. And two coats of this should be all I need. The true applicator, it doesn't matter really what direction you go, you're just getting the paint on. I've got enough on here to get into that edge I did have. Most I'm going to have to do is three coats with the cashmere. Mm 
Jim, can you hand me a whole wet but not drippy paper towel? tapping to get the rest of the bubbles off of this. This particular surface, maple can be really slick and this was, so it requires a little bit more work to get those bubbles popped. And because this is cashmere, I'm also going to give it more time to dry. Tip it into different lights when you're looking at something this uh, easy to move around. It's easy to see if you still have bubbles that are going to give you problems. And normally I do brush and roll because for me the sponge is a little harder to get the bubbles all done with, but everybody finds a different, finds out different which is better for them with this paint. So now I do have some white that got up on here. So while it's still doable, I'm gonna rub against that and get it off. And even already, it's not easy to get it off of there. That way it still gives me a lot of choice for what I do with this upper rim. Definitely want to do it now. You don't want to wait. Didn't realize I had paint in that spot on my finger. So now that's ready to dry. I'll come back and put another coat on it later. A 
With this coat of cashmere, I'm going to show you how to use several different tools because sometimes that's what happens when you're trying to get into crevices, getting into different places. You need to use more than one thing. So on larger spaces like this, I really prefer the roller and even along just the straight edge here. But there's an angled edge in here that's a little hard and there's some tight spaces here that I'm probably going to use this. So we'll see how it goes working on this. And I think I'm gonna do the inside ring first. And the reason I'm kind of going at an angle here and pulling up is I can get a good coat of paint and not get very much up on the rim at all. Whereas if I took my brush straight around, it could go up on the sides and really put quite a run of paint up on there. And especially like right here, Can see right there where that swiped. That's exactly what I'm talking about that I want to avoid doing, but I will clean that out in just a minute because I have seen that it did it and I kind of expected it to do it. Got a drip of paint there that I've got to watch out for that I don't smear onto the outside of this. Purposely kind of using my brush right there in that tiny space to go ahead and stipple that because brush bristles will do it for you too, depending on how you're doing it. Something on there. Now before I do anything else, I'm going to use my roller to come in here and I'm using this end because I'm less likely to get damage into the bottom part of this. half of that. Now I've got some spots down in here that there's some pools of paint. So I'm going to go ahead with the edge of the true applicator and get into those spots. Take care of those runs. Double checking that I don't have paint 
and see where the paint spot is on this. So I'm gonna avoid that because I don't want paint on the bottom of this. the paint heavier than I should have. So I've got more bubbles to deal with than I normally do. And that's one of the things just sometimes happens. And I'm going to go in here because there's spots where I had paint that I had just put on. But the roller could not get to it into those corners. This, the base is probably not going to need any more paint. It doesn't look like it will. But the sides of it, the outer edges, are going to need more paint. Unless this dries and shows me something different. But before I stop, just like I did before, I'm going to get in here with a wet cloth and scrub off where I did not want this paint to be. Otherwise, later on, I would have to sand it to try to get it off. This is also the point at which you would do a similar process to this if I were trying to wet distress the edges of, of a piece of furniture. I would be doing exactly the same thing. Wet cloth. And there you go. I managed to get into that anyway. Well, I'm going to get it off of there. I got it off. Cool. Just keep moving your the spot of your um, cloth and good brand paper towels work just as well as lint-free cloth to do this. Cheap paper towels won't work. 
they will tear. But this is already looking like an updated piece compared to what it did look like. Back up here before I forget. significant pressure to get that off. This is wet, but not drippy. It's more than damp but it's not drippy. If it's drippy and you're putting this pressure, you're gonna create run marks in the paint job you've just done because it's gonna run down inside here. that dry. And come back and finish painting it. Looking at it as it's drying, um, I'm definitely going to put a full third coat on here. Uh, but that's pretty normal with uh, cashmere. So it's really not bothering me that I need to do that. And on this coat, I'm choosing not to roll or stipple this last coat along the band because it's smoothed beautifully with my brush.
because I wasn't overzealous, I'm not getting tons of bubbles this time. And this should be all this needs. I've got a little bit to wipe off on the top edge, but not much. And I've got the damp cloth here to do it with. The inside of this has dried now, and I want to add stain on the outside of this. I'm going to start with toasted oak. I'm not sure it's going to give me enough difference on this for the look I want, but it's where I'm going to start with it. And I purposely did not stir this off camera, just as a reminder that, and this is dry stained, it's not anything on here that's going to get in the stain on this spoon. Anytime you work with these stains, they're going to have liquid in the top of them. You've got to stir that. This was stirred um, a few days ago with a project I was working on, so it doesn't need as much as it usually does. You want to stir gently, but you want to get that mixed. Use the brush to get it back off into here. And before I put that away and clean it up, to put it away, I will um, clean the top of the can off. <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to do with this, I'm only going to stain the outside here and the top the bottom of this is in a, has a good finish on it. I don't need to stain that. But I do need to make sure that this area here on both of these is stained because that's an area you will forget. And the gizmo we have here is an old tray out of a microwave, it's spinner ring that's underneath. And then, for the moment, Jim has used carpenter tape to tape these pieces of hard foam onto here to have this at a good height for me to work and for the cameras to pick up what I'm doing. But it allows this, will then allow it to spin so that I'm not having to touch this all over the place. A little of the gel goes a very long way. Pulling it off that brush. You want your last strokes with stain to definitely be in the direction of grain. And the stain requires you to have some mineral spirits to clean your brushes. You could use a disposable brush, but I don't like throwing away things all of the time and do so only when I need to. So I know I've got some finish on that. I'm going to flip this up. And while I've got this brush going, I'm going to add the stain off of this. I'm choosing because I'm letting some of this finish show through on this anyway. I'm choosing not to wipe back on this. 
but I'm also putting a very thin coat on here. My purpose for pouncing is to get the stain into the brush. And before I forget, People complain about chip brushes losing bristles. I'd already done it with that brush. But pounce this across before it has anything on it, and that will usually get any currently loose bristles out of the way for you. I like that. It's softer. It's a more modern tone, but I'm going to add a little bit of tobacco over it while it is still wet. And I'm going to use the smaller brush. I'm going to go ahead and do that all the way around the outside. Then I'm going to do this top rim and add with that. Actually, I'll go ahead and add it on there. My gloves are clean so I can get all of it at once.
That is exactly what I wanted. So just like the water place gels, if you work quickly, you can layer the stains as well. So now this is ready to dry. It will take it longer. Um, it may take this as long as 24 hours to not be tacky. So I don't want to touch it. I just want to let it sit, um, clean up. And tomorrow I will put the last piece of what I want to do to the inside of this. I want to put in the center of this tray uh, a stencil with a French logo on it, which is Patissiere Confessière Specialité de Patience, Marquis de Fabrique, which is a um, unique um, pastry and confection specialty bakery with the idea that it is the owner's special recipes that are in it. I want to add that to this because I nod to my French her heritage and to um, the fact that this will probably have breads and pastries put in it at different times. But I want it to be a really subtle um, design in it. So I'm going to try um, the antiquing gel to give that. My backsplash has a hint of gray in it. The gray will go with the blues and it will also not clash with this wood tone because I want to put it on so pale. If all else fails, I will do a wash of cashmere over it if it goes too dark for me. Uh, but I'm thinking that the antiquing gel is going to be translucent enough to let me get the effect I want. Um, I'm using a small piece of true applicator, which is what I usually use with stenciling. But usually with stenciling, I'm trying to get really good dark coverage. And in this case, I don't want a heavy coverage. So I'm going to try to keep as light a coat as is possible. I've used yellow tape because it is most likely to um, not pull up any paint on me. I don't trust um, blue tape at all. And you want to go straight up and down when stenciling. This is taking me longer, but I think I'm going to get the look I want of a faded look with it versus a full coverage look, which is what I normally want. I want it readable, but faded. Barely touching, I got more than that I wanted. Always be careful of the edges of your stencil, that you're not going past it.
there's very little on this ceramic. So even though I am repeatedly going back to it, I'm not getting very much paint at all or antiquing gel. I'm just looking to make sure that all the sharp little points in this got paint. Use the hand that is not pouncing to help you control that this doesn't lift up and move around. But I think there's one spot up here at the top. I think this is going to be and exactly the way I want it. I always like to leave little points of the tape up so that I know I'm going to have control to lift this straight off. And yes, I got exactly the look that I wanted in that. So it's not stark, it's soft, like it's been used a lot and worn off some over time. So this now, I can find a spot here to lay this. Um, the bottom has been done and you can see that I followed the grain line on it. So all of this is completely done now. The last thing I will do off camera, because this is going to have food items on it, and because of that, um, other people visiting, grandkids and all, may not think about putting something wet in here and leaving it to sit. So just on the inside of this, I will give it um, a couple of coats of the waterproof, water, I'm sorry, the water resistant um, sealer by HTP, just to give it some extra protection in case something wet is sat in it and left in it. Or if someone takes this out on the patio and glasses are set on it and they sweat, that water sitting there pooled won't be sitting on the paint for long term and maybe forgotten as people are coming in for the evening and something gets left out. But anyway, this is complete and I hope it's helped you. And if it has, let us know what about this did help and uh, what you liked about it. And watch more videos of us, please. Thank you. When we redid our kitchen, one of the things that we sourced was this wood, which is from 100, and plus, 100 plus year old barns in East Tennessee. There's a company there that is salvaging the barns and then selling the wood for purposes like we're using and other uh, art projects. So we actually ripped the wood and created this pattern. There's no extra finish on it. This is exactly the way the wood was when the barn was torn down and the wood was salvaged. So when you look at how this tray looked originally, that maple color, while the tray was in good condition, that maple color is the wrong color for the wood tones that are in our kitchen. But now that I have change the finish on it, you can see that it blends in with the warm brown tones of this naturally aged wood. So that's what brought about the idea of changing this tray from what it looked like to what it will be when it's completely finished. I am going to add the stain on the bottom here exactly like I did this, but you can see grain lines here. I will be following those grain lines straight across when applying the stain, the first coat of toasted oak, and then applying the additional 
tobacco on top of it. So that then this piece, no matter how it's turned, it will look nice and look as though it fits within our kitchen. You will not believe how long it took to train my mom and pa to do this trick so that I can relax and enjoy myself. <laughs> this is the life. It took weeks uh, to train them, but it was worth it. I trained my mom to give me a treat when I'm done. Yes, good girl. 